Good evening, everyone. It's good to be back after the weekend, and it's Monday, and it's 8 p.m. UK time. So as you know, it is time to start our live event. I'm very, very happy uh, to be back with you all and welcome to our our IVF webinar and tonight we do have a very intriguing and also very interesting topic to discuss and also as always we have a very special guest as you can see Daria Wagner is with us already and i um, so very happy to have you here with us Daria how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great. I'm very happy to uh, join IVF Talks platform. So nice to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. We are definitely happy and excited to have you as our presenter. And let me just briefly tell you that Daria is uh, the PG PhD and the author of the blog Palio Mama, all about egg health and if you haven't seen that blog yet i definitely encourage you to take a look uh, definitely lots of information that will be useful for you and uh, dalia definitely has um some experience with with uh, providing that because she is also a cell biologist fertility advisor and author of uh, a book that ebook that is germany's most popular fertility um, book I, I, from what I've seen on Amazon as well. Uh, so if you haven't seen that yet, this is something that you definitely should uh, take a look at. And so we are definitely happy to have you on board with us. And thank you so much for joining us tonight because it's it's brilliant to have you here. And I know that you have your uh, personal experience on that. So that's, as, as you well. can imagine, even as better. Well. <laughs> so so we, know we are definitely happy to have you on board. And before we start with your presentation, because as you know, we will start with the presentation and the topic tonight, as I mentioned, is definitely one of the topics that this... Um, I mean, many, many people are asking this um, themselves, I'm sure. So when is the best time to have a baby? And we will discuss this. Daria will present, um, we'll have a presentation on that, of course. But afterwards, what is even more uh, important uh, is that you will have a chance to ask your questions. So uh, as you know, you can simply put those in the chat section and Daria will answer them for you right after our presentation and uh, yeah as you know my avi offenses we are here every single day from monday till friday as we want to explore different topics we want to encourage you to ask questions but we also want to give you this this opportunity to ask your questions uh, to also meet the top fertility experts doctors but also psychologists fertility experts or anyone really that can actually help you out with uh, with the questions that you have but also bring you some maybe new information but maybe um also give you this opportunity to to find out some of the things that uh, you might already know but need to explore this further so um yeah we are definitely happy to to be here every single day and support you and i know you have many many questions so um let's let's not waste any more time and uh well let's start with the presentation okay daria are you ready to begin yes yes thank you thank you so much then go ahead all right so when is the best time to have a baby i'm very happy to join in from berlin germany hello um so when couples plan to have a family, they, they think, of course, about cute, perfect, healthy little babies. And that makes sense in a way. But what couples should be thinking about and what women should be thinking about are actually perfect, healthy, uh, beautiful looking eggs because eggs are, in a way, much more important. At the beginning of every human life, there is a single egg cell. So it's an egg that leads to an embryo. It's an egg that leads to a pregnancy, finally to a baby. So basically nothing 
in terms of becoming a mother happens without at least one egg or to better say actually it's never one egg it's a certain quality of perfect healthy robust eggs so for couples who are trying to get pregnant naturally it means basically no eggs equals no babies and um i notice a lot that there is there is a general lack of fertility regarding um, these, these sort of issues, especially in women over 35. And that's not good. Uh, I believe that women should know much better how eggs live, how eggs metabolize, how eggs give babies. And they should also be able to apply this knowledge to their eggs to improve egg and embryo quality. Um, the unconvenient truth about women's eggs is that we are born with all the eggs we will ever have. There will never be new ones coming up. So that's a really funny thing about biological clock of ovaries. So eggs of a woman are formed when she was still a fetus when she was still like 16 to 20 year, uh, weeks old fetus in her mom's belly. So if you have your mobile switched on, please have a look for a second. It's about this stage. So that's like very, very, very little. At about this stage, a female fetus has at first like a small clump of just like 50 stem cells. These stem cells, they migrate at a place where ovaries will later grow and then they divide they divide a lot and at some point a female fetus has about like five maybe even seven million eggs so that's sort of a lot but then at some point for the reasons which we absolutely have no clue about why that happens they start deteriorating so they start declining in numbers we have no idea, I said, why this is going on. But this will continue basically throughout the life of a woman. So when a female baby is born, she comes into this world with about one, or some say like one to two million eggs. And that actually still sounds quite good because you don't need to have two million children, right? You want like one or two, maybe three kids. Uh, but um, the funny thing is they will still keep declining in number. So at the point when a young woman reaches puberty and gets her cycle, and cycle is sort of a ground zero in a fertile life of a woman. So this is where everything starts. So at that point, women will be left with about three to four hundred thousand cells so at a ground zero at the onset of your period of your cycle you stand there like any woman stands there with about three to four hundred thousand cells so this is the beginning and from that point on the eggs will disappear at a rate of about one thousand eggs per month so at the beginning, in very fertile years, this will be more. And then after the age of 30, and especially 35, this will be maybe several hundred uh, eggs per month. So this decline is in a way sharp. So if you're watching, if you're able to see your screen, please have a look at this very important figure from one very important paper. So these things we know for the past like 10, 11 years. So this is sort of new knowledge. And um, here you can see at the beginning, there is uh, quite a fair amount of uh, eggs uh, present. And then uh, there is a linear uh, degrading in a way. And then at some point towards the end of the fertile life of a woman, this uh, curve is becoming more uh, sort of um, uh, exponential. 
So, which brings us to the next chart, and I will keep it. Uh, I will try to keep it not too scientific in this talk. So, um, this brings us basically to the last chart, and uh, uh, scientifically speaking, this question: When should women have babies? is very easy to answer. So, please have a look. There are basically two curves uh, you need to follow. So, there is this first curve. Um, so, the first one. Uh, you see a huge amount of eggs uh, at the beginning of life. And then there is sort of linear digression until about the age of 35 to 37. So this is sort of individually set. And then there is exponential decline. There is this second curve. It starts at about the onset of a cycle. So this is the time when first poor quality oocytes will appear and also selection processes will start taking place, of course, with each new ovulation and then selection processes will at some point um, also become weaker and not so precise. So after the point when these two lines cross, uh, pregnancies are not very likely. So they, they are not impossible, but not very likely to happen. So basically, if a couple is serious about becoming genetic parents to their children, they should definitely use this. Um, you see, I, I uh, put it in a, in a different color, like uh, this area um, beneath the curve. And for the woman, it means the time between 19 and 29. So between 19 and 29 is the time when women should start having children or at least have their first baby. And um, well, unfortunately, we don't really listen to our biological clocks. We have many good reasons to live actually uh, quite contra to our biological clocks. Um, there is explosion of late childbearing today. We all know that, uh, especially in Western countries, women are develop, uh, delaying childbirth for all kinds of reasons. So there is a true explosion of late mummies, uh, especially in the group of 35 to 30 year, uh, 39 years old women. And uh, in a group of 40 to 44 years old women, uh, first births uh, increased for about 70% in the past like 15, less than 20 years, which is absolutely huge. So when once when one hears such things, so you would think, oh my God, if, they, if, if so many women over 40 are becoming mothers, it must be actually easy to, to get pregnant at that time. Actually, may, maybe fertility is increasing and nobody told me, but this is unfortunately not the case. And this is something that uh, reproductive clinics uh, witness and um, these numbers are, are, are of course due to, to uh, advances in reproductive technologies. Um, <clears throat> so why why do I care about all this? I care about it a lot because I'm a biologist and I've spent 13 years in the lab working actually on regeneration of stem cells and eggs are the ultimate sort of stem cells capable of regenerating the entire organism. So when uh, I started planning my family, I actually became sort of obsessed with eggs. And that was about the time when I decided to focus my entire energy just on researching eggs and researching all the ways and just about anything backed up by good and solid science that helps women sort of regenerate their eggs, maximize their, their egg quality. So in a way that is a science of turning back biological clocks, if I may say that, of course, uh, it's not wise to, to think we can totally turn, turn uh, off or, or we should, you know, switch off biological clocks. But at that time, like if we start having babies late and if we are chasing at some point every single ovulation, it's very much worth 
to uh, invest effort to to um, <clears throat> to maximize the air quality and to 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 do basically best what's possible out of our remaining eggs and embryos. So um, <clears throat> some ten years ago, I uh, I. Um, wrote a website which is now actually probably the most popular fertility blog in Germany. Uh, so you're welcome to see uh, palio slash mama punct so dot de. Uh, there is also a dot com version. Um, I have a book uh, around these topics so how to improve egg quality at 35 and above. Uh, just this morning when I was preparing for this talk, I was very happy to see that uh, although I wrote this book in 2014, uh, now, and it's 2021, uh, it's still number one on, on Amazon in this uh, specific category, so in reproduction, in, in reproductive medicine. So there is also an, an English version, like how to improve egg quality. Um, <clears throat> so... What do I do in all my uh, consulting and writing and giving talks? I uh, I try to I try to transform and tell you everything that I've learned from many experts that I've met in the past years. Um, I was incredibly privileged to meet like the top people in the field, uh, very often to visit them in their clinics, uh, in their laboratories, to talk to them, uh, like with biologists, embryologists, fertility specialists, gynecologists, uh, naturopathic doctors, uh, psychologists. Uh, lately, also people from uh, like founders of several sperm banks and so on and so on. So um, with all them, I got to talk about like most essential things related to making babies, uh, related to uh, eggs and embryos and, and lately also sperm. So I'm very, very, very happy to share that. And uh, as I said, please visit visit at least my website because there you will find a ton of interviews, also in English, like especially in German, but uh, in, in English as well. And very often it's not a sort of information that you will find if, if you go straight to a, to a clinic website <laughs> or if you just research anywhere in the internet. <clears throat> so it's really very, very distilled um, sort of knowledge. Um, so to come back to our topic, um, I've spoken once to a very famous, very known embryologist who is working in, in, in one top uh, clinic in Spain. And, and I asked her if she can confirm like what, what, what's being published uh, about when should women start having babies. And she says, oh yes, like no, no doubt about that. Like for, for a woman's biological clock, mid twenties is really the best time to have children or at least to have, uh, to have first baby. Um, in the language of, of, uh, of a biologist, so that is about the time when uh, ovarian reserve will 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 start significantly uh, decreasing, uh, and at the same time, oocyte and embryo aneuploidy will increase. So, um, um, sorry, let me skip one. Yeah. Uh, so by the time that women come into their 40s, up to 90% of their eggs are not able to give viable embryos anymore. And by the time we are 45, the chances of a successful pregnancy, even with the help of IVF, fall to fewer than 5%. So these facts are quite brutal. And in my experience, many women, even extremely smart, educated women, ignore, uh, choose to ignore these facts because they believe there is like nothing to be done there anyways. And I'm here tonight to tell you that it is very possible to improve egg and embryo quality. And we'll get there in just a second. So let me just tell you that um, I uh, think that there are numbers that 
every woman should be aware of and uh, know something about. And these numbers have to do with uh, estimating um, ovarian reserve. So we are very much used to estimating the ovarian reserve, uh, basically when there is hardly anything left or when we seek help of um, reproductive medical specialists. And I think this is very wrong and I hope very much that times will change and that young women will take initiative to uh, find out more about their eggs, about their ovarian reserve when they are still young, so that they can accord, so that they can accordingly plan their life, right? Because about five percent of all women, some will say more, but let's say about five percent of women uh, will uh, come into menopause very early, about like. In the worst case, at 25, but say at 30, 32, 33. And there are some genetic factors to this, but this is not very clear. So basically, nobody knows whether this will happen or not. And the only way to avoid any disasters <laughs> down this way is basically to know uh, uh, beforehand and be able to take these numbers into consideration and plan. So what are the numbers? It's very easy. There are not too many of them. So I know that many women tend to focus on just one hormone, tend to focus on FSH, read out, and become very stressed at the beginning of the month when they get their uh, FSH read out at the beginning of the cycle, or they focus on AMH too much. No, that's wrong. So there are basically three parameters and they are, all three are in a way, let's say equally important. So there is antral follicle count, uh, should be as high as possible, but not high uh, for a given age, like not too high. The same goes for um, AMH. So AMH is produced by granulosa cells and pre follicles. So in theory, the more the better, but it, it also should not uh, be uh, too, too, too uh, high for a given age. And uh, then there is a FSH. FSH comes from the brain. So many women sort of don't know this. So FSH comes from the head. And in a way, this is the way that head screams to the rest of the body to the ovaries like how th th this is a signal how loud a brain has to scream so that ovaries start producing maturating eggs and going towards um, ovulation so these three factors antral follicle count fsh and amh need to be combined and best is with the fourth factor with estrogen at the beginning of the cycle and this together will give actually a very, very nice, almost a perfect estimate of, of an ovarian reserve. And as you can see, it's like not, um, not uh, extreme science, it's like it's nothing that can be uh, fairly easily done. Like young women basically just need to be educated to want to do this. Um, okay, to... Um, Go now towards the end of the talk. Yes, so of course it's not only the eggs. Obviously, I um, I tend to obsess about eggs a lot, but it's not only the eggs. So there are all sorts of, as you know, sperm issues or bad intercourse timing sometimes, or block tubes or um, all kinds of implantation issues or simple luck. And all of that plays a role in getting and staying pregnant. Um, but as I said, I'm here tonight to um, tell you that it's possible to improve egg and embryo quality and that we nowadays know much more about the so-called uh, peri-implantation window. So uh, that is the time, these are the months before the conception takes place. So the old dogma that there is like absolutely nothing that can be done about 
the equality. Like the equality is just something that is genetically determined and nothing to be done about it. It's just not wrong. It's just not right. So um, in the months before you plan pregnancy or in the months before you go to IVF, and I'm speaking about like three to five months time. So it's quite, it, it needs some dedication, it needs some effort, but um, it's, uh, um, it's very wise. And I think basically it's also the only uh, intelligent solution to invest uh, time and effort into improving um, eggs and, and also sperm. So improving cells that are supposed to be, uh, th 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 that will make the baby finally. So as you see, the the sort of highest return on on investment when it comes uh, to, to 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 children comes very 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 early in life. So at this point, you can do so much for them and for their future health. Um, so you can save yourself a lot of trouble uh, down the way when, when you when you invest time in good eggs and good uh, sperm. So uh, how this can be done? Okay, we could talk about this for a long time. I'm very happy to answer any questions. But like very quickly, let me just tell you that, okay, obviously the, the first factor that plays a huge role in, in egg quality is also the one that we can't really influence, and that is the age of the woman. So uh, that one is the most important. But there are many other factors as well. And let me just show you as a small teaser. Here I put a slide and on my website you will find a ton of uh, beautiful references, uh, bibliography, literature, scientific papers and so on and so on. These things are quite new. I mean, you, you, you see some of the papers are like three to five years old. And um, it's um, it's truly beautiful how how we've learned that it's possible to uh, impact uh, egg quality by sometimes even simple life interventions like um, uh, losing weight or anyhow bringing body mass index into a certain range. And very often you hear this. BMI should be like between 19 and 25, but that's quite a genera, generous approximation. Actually, body mass index should best be at about 21 to 23. So if you are much uh, below, say if you are 19 or even below, it's sort of underweight for pregnancy. And it's quite likely actually that the body is just not happy with being pregnant. Um, when you go above to about, let's say, body mass index 25, it's not that critical. Like some uh, extra weight around the belly is, um, is not a problem for, for getting pregnant. But anything beyond this, like after, like beyond BMI of 28, there are serious difficulties and there are excellent papers describing that uh, above BMA, uh, BMI of 28, like each extra BMI point will reduce pregnancy chances for about 4%. And uh, it's not just about getting pregnant, it's also about staying pregnant. So miscarriages would also um, increase uh, in numbers. And this increase will not be linear, will be exponential and so on and so on. Uh, there are other relatively simple interventions as well. So there is a lot that can be done with nutrition. And in terms of nutrition, we uh, discuss uh, anti-inflammatory uh, nutrition a lot. Uh, this comes very, very close to Mediterranean diet style. But of course, Mediterranean diet will not uh, mean uh, pizza and pasta and so on, but will rather mean like, uh, barely processed foods and lots of vegetables and lots of fruits and fish and a lot of omega-3 and olive oil and so on and so on. So there is a lot that can be done with that, actually for both when men and women. And um, if you visit some other of 
some of my other talks, sometimes I just talk about nutrition. And there are excellent studies on benefits of Mediterranean diet for both men and women. Like uh, applied for just six months prior to pregnancy, uh, Mediterranean diet leads in, in the intervention group that couple uh, get pregnant faster and, and stay pregnant better. And like, we don't even know why is this the case. Like we believe that it has something to do with B vitamins, with plentiful uh, folic acid, or to say folate because it comes from food. Uh, sometimes some people even say, you know, it has to do with red wine, with uh, resveratrol from a red wine. Maybe it's a chemistry like coming from all ingredients together. We don't know. But there is something to it, and you should take the advantage of it if you are preparing for uh, for an expensive IVF, or even if you are trying to get pregnant naturally. And then, of course, there is targeted supplementation. But this will be totally like a talk for itself. Uh, there is definitely a lot that can be done with supplements. And with supplements, I, I will just say like folic acid and omega-3 and vitamin D. Please, ladies, please, 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 please make sure to get to about 40 nanogram per milliliter of vitamin D when you're trying to get pregnant. Um, give it also to your partner. Uh, Q10 is a great one. And um, so these substances are totally backed up by science. And any woman trying to get pregnant should, should take a decent amount of this. And there are many other substances that are very helpful as well, but they should better be individually adjusted. So here then we would speak about Molly not at all about uh, the HEA, about all kinds of things, but this is really something that needs to be fitted with a hormonal profile because here I see mistakes a lot and please, please, please don't do a damage to yourself. Uh, because like um, it's it, th there are just differences. It's not the same if a woman is healthy and just having sort of a decreased uh, ovarian reserve due to her age, or is a woman sort of uh, subfertile or even infertile due to whatever disorder, uh, PCOS or endometriosis, or name it. Like these are big differences is in terms of hormonal milieu uh, and, and, and metabolism. So this is not to be treated with same supplements. So when it comes to supplements, I say, please take them and please take the good ones. And like everything else where you're not sure, uh, rather don't, don't uh, uh, make a laboratory out of your body. So these are like... Uh, very, very quick uh, notes. And um, I keep my fingers crossed for your improved egg and embryo quality. Bye-bye. Let me see what happens now. Um, yes, let me see. Are you? Yes, hello. Oh, okay, sorry. I think you can hear me now. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much indeed for that lovely presentation. And I think that you opened that kind of a box where the questions will come in right now. Uh, you have mentioned supplements and I definitely know from experience that this is a topic that... Um, is this is one of those topics that will bring lots and lots of questions i am sure and actually we do have some questions on that already uh, but of course remember that now it is time to start our q a session so if you have any questions left um well just go ahead and do it right now uh, type those in and uh, dario will help you out okay and now let's start with the very first question that we got from margie okay daria Yes. So Margie asks, uh, hello, is there, um, sorry, I just have to remove my picture. Yeah. Hello, is there any hope for a woman who is 39 to 41 years old to have a baby with own eggs? 
Well, this will definitely depend on her egg, on her ovarian reserve, right? So I would need to see hormonal values. So very likely the answer is yes, but there, at this age, there are just no, no guarantees, of course. So without seeing any hormonal values, it's just uh, difficult to say more. AMH 1.6, well, 1.6 is good. 1.6 is um, actually quite good. Do we have any, do you have FSH at the beginning of the cycle? Could you write it down? Do you have any estimation of antral follicles, any previous difficulties, medical history? FSH, FSH, FSH 7, 7 sounds mm -hmm. good. So with AMH of 1.6 and FSH of 7 at the beginning of the cycle, let's say a 39-year-old woman um, without previous medical history or any difficulties and so on, especially if, if she's had a child before, should definitely uh, be able to, to, to fall pregnant and actually to have a healthy baby, definitely. Uh, well, sounds good. Sounds good, but there are, of course, like a uh, thousand other factors to it. But it's um, it's a fairly promising situation, definitely, with AMH of one point six. Yes. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Largy, for your very first question, and of course. Daria for your answer to that and let's have a look this is probably one of the questions that we receive very very often and I'm sure you do receive it as well <laughs> how can I improve my quality does DHEA really work you've mentioned a few others right so is it for everyone yes and no yeah how can I improve my egg quality well with time and dedication it will work, uh, it will give good results. It may not work uh, equally well for everyone. It's sort of individual, sort of uh, genetically determined. It also had to do, has to do with previous lifestyle a lot. But uh, just like with anything else, like, you know, if, if, if you want to strengthen your body for the beach and start exercising and having diet in winter, you will definitely see the results in summer. So it's, it's a very similar with the rest of your body, which you can't see. And these are your uh, organs and everything uh, going on there. So it is, of course, possible to... to um, uh, to, to change metabolism of just about any organ and especially to take uh, um, part in what's going on during egg duration. Because uh, please don't forget, you know, we women are very much used to think that eggs are uh, sort of a passively resting in the ovaries, like nothing going on there. Uh, well, this is the truth before a woman, uh, before eggs uh, go into maturation. And, and towards uh, ovulation, but like two weeks, like, well, not just two weeks. Well, first it's like two to three months that it takes for primordial cells to reach the antral follicle stage. So already in the ovary, in this very, very early uh, maturation phase, it's very important to supply uh, right nutrients. And actually, most people who work, biologists who work and do research on DHEA, they tend to believe that this is the stage where DHEA um, is best applied and, and actually um, increases, improves uh, testosterone milieu. Uh, we still don't know all the details, but so there is first like this period of two to three months where primordial cells are maturing towards antral follicles. And then when you have antral follicles, you have the last two weeks of very rapid egg maturation, so towards ovulation. So in a natural cycle, there will be a lot of selective pressure applied and um, most of antral follicles will go into atresia, so they will die and there will be one egg left at the beginning of uh, at, at, in the middle of the cycle but in the idf uh so because of stimulation drugs uh this uh, atresia will be cancelled so the dying off will not take place um 
all follicles will will uh, uh, develop. So towards the mid cycle, they will be saved in a way. And um, so this is the time where where really you want to have good nutrients, right nutrients in your blood and supplying your ovaries. So yes, the DHEA can be a part of this equation for many, not for all. So DHEA, uh, DHEA is shown, actually there are like over 80 studies uh, so far done on uh, DHEA. So it's, it's a very known substance. There are thousands of women uh, worldwide who have taken part in clinical studies and who have seen uh, improvement in egg and embryo quality after DHEA supplementation. So like nothing new about that. Um, it's, it's definitely more for women who, who are on decreased uh, ovarian reserve side or even on premature ovarian failure side uh, or uh, women, I would say almost generally for women over 40. So it's not for younger women and especially it's not for women with uh, higher, I would say higher um, androgens, but it's, it's difficult. Really DH, DHA is something that uh, needs um, individual estimation. And excellent. Thank you so much indeed for your question, Melissa, and of course for your thorough answer. And you just, uh, you know, we have some similar topics, you know, so let me go straight to that one as it is about supplements. So could we take too much supplements or the body can handle it and just take what it needs? Yeah, uh, well, this is definitely what I see daily. So um, many things that like in, in, in my work, I tell women which supplements to take. And this is just partially truth, actually much more. I tell them which supplements to please don't take, which supplements to discontinue. Because um, uh, I definitely observed that when, when women uh, s try to get pregnant and at some point it doesn't work and, you know, there is IVF, uh, you know, coming up and so on, they will basically do pretty much everything. They will take anything that they can find, they have uh, heard in the internet, anybody has told them. I frequently see women taking like the entire lists of 20 and sometimes more supplements. This is just incredible. So um, all I can say to this is like, please, please don't do it. Because um, um, not only that you can damage uh, certain processes, but uh, nobody in the world knows how these supplements work with each other. Because the thing is, whatever we put into our system, it will lead to some effects, like all substances will have some effects and how they will cross and how they will interact like nobody can tell you especially when this comes together with uh, all, all kinds of drugs and, and stimulation stuff and so on it's really not good and uh, so be careful about this and it's just it's not only extra supplements it's also extra herbs ladies and i often see like especially women who are taking acupuncture uh, they almost invariably get all sorts of tinctures, which are highly concentrated plant extracts. And uh, please remember that one single pharmaceutical plant can have dozens of active compounds and half of those compounds can act on estrogen receptor or some other steroid receptor. So they work on a hormonal level. So when you put all that together, it's like a mixture that basically no one can control. So I definitely recommend to work with a limited, with targeted supplementation with a minimal amount of substances, but that are backed by science. They are really scientifically proven to work in a uh, defined clinical studies that are available to read and to understand. And these are like very, very few substances we are talking about. 
and again thank you so much indeed for yet another interesting question and actually we have a follow-up okay for le so let me go straight to the follow-up before i go back to the previous question so could you please name some supplements we should not take well th this is indeed a difficult question so i i let, let me it's much more simple if I tell you which one any woman trying for a baby should take. Um, uh, if I can go back to my slides, no, okay, let me let me keep it simple. So you have yes. to think about it like. Sorry, you can go. We can um, go back. You just need to tell me which slide. You no, mo like. most people most people are probably just listening. So I okay. maybe I just better tell you. So the supplements you 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 need to think about is like folic. So folic acid, this one should be definitely 800 micrograms per day, or even if you take one milligram per day, it's fine. Um, the second one you should be thinking of is vitamin D. And with this one, please try to get in a range of 40 to 50 nanogram per milliliter vitamin D in the blood. So the third one to think about is omega-3. Omega-3 should be taken in, well, we say like one to two gram per day. So the, the major omega-3 sources are EPA and DPA. So these two combined should be about one to two gram. And please, while uh, increasing omega-3, please try to decrease your omega-6 via nutrition. So this is the anti-inflammatory effect you are trying to reach. You are trying to fix this uh, ratio from omega-3 to omega-6. So omega-6, we, we normally have a way too much in our diets, a way too much. So that's why we are trying to decrease this and, um, and have regenerative <laughs> processes taking over, not the inflammatory ones. And, and also having the cell membranes be nice and fluid and not fragile and, and, and thick. Uh, and then the last one you should be thinking about is Q10. So any woman trying for a baby should be uh, supplementing at least 200 milligram Q10. So this is something extremely important, especially in, 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 in women over 35. Uh, because this has to do with mitochondria and uh, with um, um, uh, the spindle, if, if you know what I'm talking about, in this very late mitotic uh, division and also in early embryo with uh, cellular divisions. So this is where it helps. And everything else can be too much, depending on a hormonal profile. So there are things that are excellent sometimes, like DHEA, like sometimes myonositol, like very often extra zinc or saline, or, you know, like, all, and, you know, for thyroid support for, well, depending on what, what, you know, which issues a woman has, but like anything else is, is very often not helpful. Understood, of course. Thank you so much. And as you can see, Margie has added, yes, so she is taking ubiquinol, vitamin D, prenatal vitamins. Yeah, sounds good. So I is she, I, is she trying to get pregnant naturally? This we don't know. Sounds good. I would add omega-3 to this. I would try to eat anti-inflammatory diet uh try to research about it it's not difficult or just to try to do, get get a cookbook for mediterranean diet and you'll be fine so decrease carbs decrease gluten yes this helps i must say um and uh yeah sh just control your thyroid and think about your uh, partner or husband because we very often tend to take everything on ourselves and I see every day how deeply women get involved <laughs> even with, with treatment already without their partner having been to a doctor even once you know having had uh, you know his single single you know sperm analysis so um there are there are definitely two in this game and uh, so 
just think about it that uh, uh, these days we, we are speaking about huge sperm issues as well. Uh, thank you so much indeed for mentioning that because this is definitely a big part that is not uh, talked about enough, I would say, from what I've seen. And um, as we are talking about it, I would definitely say and would like to mention that we are having uh, another topics actually coming up, topics on male reproduction, so many different issues. So I am definitely very happy that we are going to um, also discuss this because as you've mentioned, it's something that is very often omitted and um, definitely it's something that shouldn't be omitted at all. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Um, okay, and let's have a look. Okay, more questions are coming up. So something else here for you. Is it safe to take Moringa? Not sure, sorry, here and Baoba powder, why trying to conceive? Anything you can add? Uh, no, no, no. I I don't work with this one. I guess if it's on the market and if you got it especially from your therapist, should be safe. But is it efficient? Is it... Um, uh, so should it be recommended? I don't know. So this would probably depend on everything else. So just continue talking to your therapist and make sure to totally understand why uh, why you're giving especially bulba powder. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. So one more question. Is there some foods to avoid during TTC? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. E yes, I would say <laughs> anything that um, uh, that brings your body mass index uh, out of this range uh, between twenty one and twenty three should be avoided. So um, I sometimes joke. I say, you know, diet of elimination. Elimination is probably the, the, the sometimes. The the, you know the best diet we sometimes you know women obsess a lot like of what should i eat what should i eat they google a lot you know what which foods help and sometimes it's just about what should be omitted and um so what should be omitted is definitely too many uh carbohydrates coming from simple sugars uh coming from simple you know flour so uh, reducing gluten without being too radical like if you don't have allergy if you really don't if your body is not creating uh, antibodies so uh, to, to this protein so if, if you um if you don't have a real like celiac disease you, you don't need to be radical about uh, reducing it but say reducing gluten to say 80 percent will definitely help and not just with getting pregnant, it will help with many other issues. I would say it's not possible to reduce gluten to a large amount without seeing um, many uh, positive things on the body. So I have women reporting all kinds of things like feeling less swollen, not having headaches, uh, thinking more clearly. Sometimes it's, you say, how is this possible? But knowing uh, its inflammatory uh, capacities and so on, it's, um, it's definitely possible. So I would say avoiding anything that is increasing inflammation in the body is what you want to do during uh, TTC journey. Excellent, thank you so much. And one more question though, uh, what about glutathione? Yeah, what about glutathione? Difficult, you know, I've done many experiments with glutathione and I loved it in the cell culture. Uh, you know, it works like a charm. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I can just say things, many things that we know that work great and cell culture just don't work as well uh, in real people and um, our bodies our uh, intestines are very very wise and very clever and they they are suspicious towards most of the substances and very often they won't even take them so sometimes we read on the labels you know great things and beautiful claims about different substances and supplements but this comes from cellular culture work and in reality it will never even get to the blood 
you know so it will not be even taken it just goes through the you know through through uh digestive system and, and goes out basically and and especially you know like things really need to be controlled and i always say have a look you know did that company really you know do they did they have any testing anything in the clinic do they uh, show absorption rates in, 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 in people, how much of that substance is there still after six hours, after eight hours, after 24 hours, is there anything around and so on. So it's difficult. I'm not aware of any clinical studies, especially not related to improving directly egg quality with glutathione. And thanks so much again for the explanation. And there are like two questions left. We will be slowly finishing. However, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Go ahead and type those in in the chat section. Um, okay, next one is an interesting question. So when is a woman defined as a polyomama? <laughs> <laughs> no, no woman is, is defined as a polyomama. It's just the name of my website. I, um, I've i noticed a long time ago what... Uh, and, and, now there are many beautiful studies and papers and this and uh, uh, so when you are when you are improve you know people who are improving egg and embryo quality and and sort of uh, um, trying to reverse reproductive aging a bit so a lot of that comes to um, going into this more natural mode of functioning and like you have to ask yourself so okay what is with this modern lifestyle that is working against me so what is it that i can learn from the past you know what can i have a look you know what what what, what did my grand 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 grandmothers you know uh do differently so um this is where where, where it came from you know the name paleo mama but uh, i can answer this question like uh, advanced reproductive aging uh, is uh, is a term that is used uh, for uh, describing uh, uh, women over 35. So women who are trying to have babies over 35, they, they belong to this group of, uh, yeah. So th this is what we talk about, like in the studies, when you have this reproductive aging, and this is the group. All right, thank you so much for um, that question indeed, of course, for your help. Um, okay. Okay, interesting. Let me go straight to this one. Is there something similar for men? Um, there are definitely substances that help a lot, but this would like totally go into, into a different talk, into a different topic. I'm actually giving a talk on this one uh, in two days. So if you understand German, you are very welcome to register through my website and I'll give like two hours talk on exactly this question. So yes, there are uh, many substances that give beautiful results uh, in men. And the nice thing is that we understand much more about sperm than what we understand about eggs, which makes sense, right? Uh, eggs are very, very difficult to obtain. And basically we started finding out something about eggs and understanding how they live and metabolize with the uh, onset of uh, reproductive technologies, which just sort of happened, you know, sort of yesterday, uh, speaking in, in like terms of, you know, medicine and science and so on. So, uh, yes, there is a lot known about sperm and there are some uh, also th there are some good mixtures and some good supplements, things like, you know, Prexeed, I think it's called in the UK, I, I, I believe, like in, in Germany, it's more like uh, orthomol that is used for men and so on and so on. But uh, it's, it's, again, a lot of, you know, strong antioxidants. So these are most important ones. And then everything else, like vitamins and some amino acids. And again, reducing body mass index, sport activity, oxygen, oxygenizing like body sort of from the inside uh, and so on and so on. So, yes, there are things that help a lot. All right. Thank you so much indeed for that question and uh, well yeah let's have a look at the next one definitely another interesting questions um are coming up and of course you know that's that might be our final one however uh, again if you have anything else to add 
go ahead and type this in. Oh, there's an interesting one. <laughs> Definitely. That's what I mentioned, right? So what is your opinion of vaccine and neck health? I am 43, hoping to get for retrieval in June and decided not to take the vaccine. Thank you, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's a nice question. Thank you for this one. Uh, if you, again, if you understand German and go to my website, Died. I have a very long article on this. I I went some months ago very deeply into this topic with several other people, and we have had some contacts actually with with sort of insiders in the company who who, who has made the the Pfizer uh, vaccine, because as you may know, the vaccine, the technology has been made in Germany. And, and and then it was picked up and and and, and uh, scaled up and, and distributed by Pfizer. So we took quite a deep look into this, and um, it's sort of difficult to say. And uh, yes, there are very serious people and absolutely great doctors and great scientists having some uh, some 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 sort of doubts on whether women who didn't have children should take it. And I must say, I'm, I, I understand that a lot. I understand that very well. And we still need to understand much more about how a virus works and how a vaccine works um, before we, we, we tell women who haven't had children yet to take a vaccine. So I think this is pretty much the last group that should be thinking about uh, getting vaccinated. Um, there are many reasons for this. As said, you can please feel free to dive into the article. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing is, it's probably better not to sort of panic about it, but there is just, there are way too many open questions, way too many open questions. And uh, yes, I can imagine well that women who are anyhow maybe having immunological issues or autoimmunity issues and so on and so on, or women who are prone to um, biochemical pregnancies, uh, miscarriages, that uh, this group in theory could be suffering even more with certain types of vaccines. But as said, this is all like we have no idea. And just for that reason that we don't know, I, um, I think there are very good reasons to wait a long time. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much indeed for that question. It is something that still we need to wait a little bit more on more evidence, yeah, to be able to provide some thorough, I would say, even in recommendations. So, yeah, thank you so much indeed for that. I mean, this is something that uh, we need to think about nowadays. It seems like we need to think about every single day. So, um, it's, it's, uh, thank you so much for that. So. Okay, one more question is right here. Okay, um, another quite interesting for sure. What is the impact of radiation nowadays for egg and sperm? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay, the impact of radiation is uh, is um, definitely very negative. But the question says nowadays, so that confuses me a bit. You probably think all sorts of. Uh, radiation probably not just uh, in in terms of x-rays but also electromagnetic rays and so on and so on uh it's difficult there are there are different sort of rays and they shouldn't be mixed up and um i think this is something that really only the time can show we really have all reasons in the world to slow down and to go down on this. Um, as said, th th this is something that I will be mentioning in my, in my talk in two days. For men, it's, uh, it's definitely not good for them to keep their mobile phones uh, you know, around their testicles <laughs> for so many hours a day. 
and uh, we used to think that it has to do like with uh, thermic, uh, you know, effects, but it's 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 not. It's definitely not. And for now, we have uh, many great studies in cell culture, where uh, cells definitely behave differently when 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 uh, just being kept around switched on mobile phones, and. Uh, evidence on men is still sort of lacking because it's unethical to do these sorts of, of course, experiments with people. So the evidence is more like anecdotal. And uh, you can also imagine that industry has no interest in, uh, you know, finding out <laughs> and so on. So this is, a, this is a question that sort of opens uh, many many other questions but just just in the case that with the radiation that you have uh, that you meant like x-rays what we normally think when we say radiation its effects are really really bad i've just had a lady um i don't know like two weeks ago uh she's been um irradiated in in lower back when she was young like six or seven times uh without without using any any uh protection this happened somewhere, I think, in Russia or something. And, uh, well, wh whatever it, it does, you know, it uh, she's now, like, not even 35 and having huge problems, like her eggs totally broken, like, just not possible, just not getting any embryos at all, and so on and so on. And this um, example just fits perfectly well with what we know about radiation. Like, it definitely, it's deleterious for uh, for chromosomes, for DNA, for uh, it's a huge no-go. And we are probably baiting and, and exposing ourselves to a way too many different um, sorts of radiation in our daily life. So some people are more robust and uh, will, will not have any consequences, but some people will and do. And what will happen like in the next generation uh, when, when effects become cumulative, this is something nobody knows and we are definitely running uh, huge and, and, and many experiments on ourselves, all of us, every day. <laughs> And thank you so much, indeed, once again for an excellent question. And I already feel that we could have some webinars, separate webinars on some of those uh, questions already. <laughs> so thank you so much, indeed, for those. We will be finishing for tonight. Um, okay, sorry, one more question, short one, so I guess we still can answer that. Are pelvic MRI bad for eggs? Uh probably depending how many and depending on whom you ask i'm not aware honestly of studies really showing and looking into this but then again this is so specific question i uh, i don't see that you know interest could be so big right like for anyone to really start looking looking into this very very uh, deeply and in detail so if you need to know this for yourself, I would really look into specific names of people uh, performing this and really going and, and uh, asking, addressing this. Mm -hmm. Of course, that makes perfect sense. And thank you so much, of course, indeed. And as I mentioned, we will be finishing for tonight. But of course, if you have any questions left, remember, you can always uh, get in touch with with us. You can use our website. Uh, the link is, uh, you will be redirected to the link, of course. And I'm sure Daria will be happy to help you out. And of course, uh, we can always forward this question to any uh, experts that we have. So go ahead and do it. And of course, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your questions. Yes, thank you. An interesting uh, session. And Dario, before we finish, anything else you would like to add before I let you go? No, no, it's been a nice seminar. I've enjoyed it a lot. I was, um, um, I always think I will miss people and I do miss people a lot. I miss my audience when I give talks online. Um, I've become aware in this strange Corona time how much we, uh, communicate with each other even when we don't say anything even when people just sit there 
they still transmit an enormous amount of information and I miss this feedback a lot when just talking online, but uh, I've enjoyed the Q&A session a lot and uh, thank you for that. Thank you so much indeed and yes, uh, I always say that, you know, though we are here every single day, but as you know, um, everyone here is just for for some knowledge and we are here to help you out a bit and daria as you can see thank you so much for your information thanks uh, thank you thank you for staying up so late i really appreciate that and i know how tired we are all of internet and everything so i really yes that. that's true because you know at some point we miss that face-to-face -face, um meetings that's for sure but uh, on the other hand we are very happy that we are still able to to simply provide you with some online events so you can you know ask your questions you can meet some new experts every day and i'm sure that it helps a lot as well and as you know this has been recorded so of course you will be able to to simply have a look at it once again tomorrow and as you know there are over 300 ivf webinars on the my ivf answers so um if you are looking for some uh, other questions if you are looking for some topics uh, you can check it out and i'm sure you will find some answers there as well and also you know that we will be back here tomorrow and day after tomorrow so if you so if you um take a look at our facebook or instagram you know that there are plenty of new events coming up with different topics so so thank you so much indeed everyone for joining daria thank you so much for your presentation for ex answering all the questions for your expertise it's been a pleasure to have you here for sure and thank you uh, well thank you so much and have a lovely evening everyone and i hope to see you tomorrow and daria uh, i just hope we will have another opportunity to have a webinar with you as well thank you so Definitely. much Definitely. take care all right bye